Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Mantle. I'm joined today by congressional reporter Julie Grace Brufke. Julie Grace, uh, we had really this big story this week over the Supreme Court. There was a leak. It suggests that maybe there's been an opinion already written that would overturn Roe versus Wade. And it's not only affected the judicial branch, but it's really taken Capitol Hill by storm. And per in particular, we've watched the Senate leaders of each party have pretty different reactions to how they want to talk about this development. Yes, the Politico scoop definitely sent some waves through the Capitol. We've seen uh, McConnell and Schumer kind of at each other's throats on this with uh, mm -hmm. Schumer really taking aim at McConnell for focusing more on the leak itself and wanting an investigation into that right. over the policy where Democrats are really looking to kind of codify Roe v. Wade at this point and right. um, feel like Republicans are deflecting. Now there have been a handful of conservatives that have kind of praised that uh, kind of looming decision there. Sure. But uh, largely I feel like from every Republican I've talked to they've kind of been more focused on the leak than anything else. I mean, because the Democrats, some of them at least, view this as a little bit of a lifeline because midterm elections are coming up. The climate has not been very favorable to them. Inflation, uh, the economy actually contracted a little bit the first quarter of the year. Uh, crime, border, all of those things are still going on. You, you have President Biden's not very popular. So to bring in abortion and have maybe something you can talk about how what the Republican majorities will do that would be controversial, that, that's got to give Democrats at least some little bit of hope. Absolutely. I've talked to some Republicans that really didn't want abortion to be the topic coming out ahead of midterms, kind of worried with younger voters that aren't as socially conservative, um, right. how that'll impact things. But I, I think it does, uh, Democrats are hoping that that definitely fires up the base and drives people to the polls, which uh, I think given the final decision isn't out and it's definitely something that they can right. run, run on. So depending on that final outcome, whether uh, that initial decision there um, is reflective of what ultimately happens. Right, right. We don't necessarily know that this draft will really be the decision in, in, in the Dobbs case. They haven't had a final vote. They haven't made any final decisions. Uh, but if this is the case, Senate Minority Leader, hoping to be Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, once again, played a pretty big role in building this conservative majority on the Supreme Court. Absolutely, and he was asked about that at a press conference this week, and he said that that's not the story right now that he'd like to focus on, and really right. they need to get to the bottom of who the leaker was, given how unprecedented it was. So mm -hmm. um, how he kind of, how the messaging kind of develops on that remains to be seen, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if they lean more into that messaging down the road. Now, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has plans to bring up a bill that would codify Roe versus Wade, and some say actually go further than Roe versus Wade in terms of what it would allow states to do in terms of regulating abortion. Uh, so that, that's obviously their approach is to really showcase abortion rights. Uh, but there's a possibility they could be setting themselves up for some disappointment. Yeah, I mean, they, they voted on a similar bill in February, um, less strong language that, mm -hmm. that failed uh, Senator Manchin. Some of the pro-life Democrats were, were against that bill, and I think mm -hmm. he's going to have the same struggles this time around. Uh, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski have kind of expressed an openness to codifying Roe v. Wade, but mm -hmm. the bill he's bringing up, uh, Susan Collins said today that um, she's not fully supportive because there aren't exemptions for Catholic hospitals. Right things along those lines. So it doesn't look like he's going to be able to have that support. Now, at a press conference earlier, he uh, asserted that this might not be the last action. And a lot of Republicans have said maybe this will be kind of the hair of the Briggs camel back on doing away with the filibuster. But right. it seems uh, like uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema still are not on board with that. So Right. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like they have the votes to end the filibuster. And it may, they may, not, even without the filibuster, may not have the votes to pass this kind of legislation. So I think there'll probably be a push for executive action. Mm -hmm. uh, what other legislative measures they could take, whether it's just scaled back, uh, still hasn't been uh, floated out there yet, but right. I think they're all kind of exploring the possibilities on how they can navigate that moving forward. Mm -hmm. Now, obvious, all of this is taking place in an election year, and a lot of it is being viewed through the prism of that. So we had some of the first primaries of this midterm election year, some of the first important ones. And in Ohio, there was a primary where former President Donald Trump, obviously not on the ballot, played a pretty big role. He did. I mean, uh, J.D. Vance was polling, in, I think, a few weeks before the election at 11 percent before that endorsement came out and kind of saw a last minute um, surge from Dolan there, who's kind of the mm -hmm. anti-Trump Republican after dumping a ton of money into that race. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think these are the Republicans running for that Ohio Senate mm -hmm. seat. 
replacing Rob Portman, who's retiring. Yeah, so they, he was the Portman uh, endorsed candidate there, right. but uh, J.D. Vance ultimately managed to pull it out, and I think uh, Trump supporters have kind of indicated they feel that shows that Trump really still has a grasp on the party. Now, there's going to be some primaries coming up, whether uh, how things play out in Pennsylvania, how things play out right. in North Carolina, kind of also remain to be seen there. But uh, that I think there's definitely going to be some interesting races coming up. Because Trump in Pennsylvania endorsed a candidate who isn't a sure bet to win the primary Isn't for Senate. That, Dave McCormick and uh, Dr. Oz are kind of neck and neck right now. So mm -hmm. it, I know they've got a debate coming up and the polling's indicated that things are very tight. So mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, Dave McCormick had sought the Trump endorsement and his wife Dina Powell had worked for the administration. Right. But uh, yeah, ultimately Trump went with Dr. Oz and we'll, we'll see uh, how things fare there. If the voters will take the former president's medicine. It's, uh, Pennsylvania is an interesting state. I how both these candidates will kind of fare in uh, the more rural areas, I feel like will be interesting. All right. Thank you, Julie Grace. You can read Julie Grace and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.